Director James Cameron returns for this ambitious follow-up that was released during the 4th of July weekend in 1991, where it eventually grows $520 million worldwide. Thanks to its at-the-time unprecedented budget of $100 million, this picture is a bigger, more complicated, and more impressive effort than its predecessor in every way. In this 137-minute action sci-fi thriller, two separate deadly cyborgs are sent back in time, one to kill and the other to protect, a future resistance fighter when he's still a kid living in Los Angeles. Arnold Schwarzenegger returns as the intimidating title character, but this time he's helping our heroes rather than hunting them. Fortunately, he's also given way more to do, even if most of his dialogue is either technical exposition or cheesy one-liners. We rejoin Linda Hamilton ten years later, who's become a tough and hardened pessimist after being locked away in a mental institution. Both individuals do an incredible job with this new dynamic, now fighting alongside each other as uneasy allies. Edward Furlong plays her young son, who despite being constantly whiny and annoying, manages to hold his own amid the bloody carnage. Now! Put the gun down now! Get out of here! Come on, guys, to split! Come on! Jesus, you were gonna kill that guy! Of course, I'm a Terminator. Listen to me very carefully, okay? You're not a Terminator anymore, all right? You got that? You just can't go around killing people. Why? What do you mean, why? Because you can't. Why? Because you just can't, okay? Trust me on this. Joe Morton does great work in a smaller but critical role as a computer scientist who is horrified to discover his technology effectively causes the apocalypse. Even Michael Bain returns in a single-scene cameo, well, at least in the extended special edition. As the menacing villain, Robert Patrick portrays a liquid metal robot assassin known as T-1000, one of the best bad guys in movie history. His cold and unassuming delivery makes him even more chilling and terrifying than his counterpart in the first installment. Finley disguised as a cop, his ability to morph into any shape and run super fast makes him an unstoppable antagonist. With this Capri Sun chameleon closing in, Schwarzenegger echoes a familiar line when he sternly advises a traumatized Hamilton, Come with me if you want to live. The high-octane moments are flanked by a fascinating story that effortlessly advances from one scene to the next without any contrivances. Like when Furlong attempts to escape the relentless T-1000 by driving his dirt bike down the L.A. River in what is perhaps one of the greatest action sequences ever filmed. It's simple in its progression, with the nondescript location keeping things very easy to follow, but tense and exhilarating with its execution. Complete with crashes, impromptu convertible conversions, gunshots, and wickedly cool one-handed shotgun reloading, this centerpiece chase culminates with a breathtaking visual effect shot. Patrick emerging from a fireball in his liquid metal state before rematerializing into his office's appearance. Another fantastic sequence, loaded with impressive model work, highlights the horrifying results of a nuclear blast during one of Hamilton's nightmares. This groundbreaking work from ILM was not only revolutionary at the time, it scored Judgment Day one of its four Academy Awards, making this the only sequel in history to win an award when its predecessor wasn't even nominated. It also scored trophies for sound, sound editing, and makeup. From the inventive liquid metal THX opening that begins the Blu-ray, to background sparks during the smelting factory climax, this is a beautifully mixed feature that deserves to be appreciated on a surround sound system. Alongside this mix is Brad Fidel's fantastic score, mixing haunting themes with sharp, intense pulses. Framing the actors with cold hues and crisp lighting, Adam Greenberg's nominated cinematography work is excellent as well, with the lockdown anamorphic shots only moving when the action is motivated. One of Cameron's trademarks is the slow-motion build-up punctuated by a gunshot, and there's no better example of that technique than during the robot's first violent encounter, when Arnold marches down a shopping mall hallway, unloading shell after shell into his enemy. If memory serves, this is the first R-rated movie I ever watched, and the exciting thrill ride has been an all-time favorite of mine ever since. Speaking of rides, this movie also inspired the equally awesome T2 3D Battle Across Time attraction at Universal Studios, which contained a unique blend of live-action stunts and a short 3D film with the original cast. This picture's lasting legacy also led to an eventual 31-episode TV series, Terminator The Sarah Connor Chronicles, which disregarded the subsequent films in favor of a direct continuation of this film's events. Judgment Day isn't just exciting and influential, though. It also delivers some important themes regarding the value of human life and the uncertainty of our future, with the oft-repeated mantra, there's no fate but what we make. Some minor mid-act pacing issues aside, this is a surprisingly believable, rewatchable, quotable, and influential picture from beginning to end. The crown jewel of James Cameron's extraordinarily successful career, Terminator 2 Judgment Day is a masterpiece of sci-fi and action, and one of my all-time favorite films. Here's what you had to say about it in the YouTube comments.
one of the most lopsided votes in the history of this program, your praise for T2 was overwhelming, with most mentioning the incredible visuals and action scenes. You scored this a 10 out of 10. One of the best sequels ever crafted, Judgment Day was well ahead of its time and is clearly an amazing film. 